Welcome back friends. Uh, in this video tutorial, we are again going to talk about the industrial production of certain elements. Now in this case, we will be talking about the industrial production of certain enzymes and one of the most important industrially produced enzymes and most vastly industrially produced enzyme and it is nothing but amylase amylase it's an enzyme which breaks down starchy material right so we know that amylase is required for normally uh, we uh, our uh, human body secretes amylase our uh, saliva contains amylase to break down the carbohydrate molecule especially the large chain of carbohydrates which are called the polysaccharide of carbohydrates to break down into smaller parts now we need this amylase enzyme uh, majorly as a sweetening agent so usually in industrial perspective amylase is used for making sweeteners it is used for making artificial sweeteners okay so the role of amylase is to break down starch so it breaks down starch into monosaccharides or small uh, units of sugar which are readily available to take uh, by any uh, body or uh, by your cells okay so usually starch is a polymer right so it's a polymer of carbohydrates it's made up with uh, glucose Okay, so normally uh, when amylase act onto the starch, normally the breakdown scheme of the starch is something like that. So let me write it. So we are having starch at the top, then it breaks down into uh, dextrose, I guess. Yeah, it is big. It normally breaks down into dextrose. Then this dextrose is broken down further into maltose. Maltose is a bisaccharide or disaccharide, which is a, having two different units of sugar attached. Not different units, same unit, but two units of sugar attached. Then maltose are finally divided into glucose. Two glucose attached together, we get maltose. Many maltose attached together get the dextrose. Then many dextrose are attached together, finally get the starch. So that's how this whole arrangement is done. And this process of breaking the starch into the simplest sugar glucose is mediated by amylase. And there are two different types of amylase uh, normally available. One is the alpha amylase, another one is the beta amylase. Both of them are important. Usually the alpha amylase uh, is required to break down the starch into glucose. Beta amylase can also be taken uh, because the beta amylase uh, mainly used for production of maltose syrup okay which is very very important ingredients in many different industrial food and uh, many different food productions in other industrial scales okay so that's the process main importance of amylase okay now let's talk about how the amylase is generated now normally industrially amylase is produced from microorganisms because the source of amylase as an enzyme definitely can be produced by uh, any organism either plants or animals or microbes now in the industrial scale we rely on microbes we rely upon microbes for the preparation of this amylase enzyme okay but we can also rely on plant but it was found that uh, the the amylase produced from microbes are much more heat resistant uh, heat resistant and also they are much more uh, ph optima and temperature optima working conditions uh, that's why we take uh, the amylase from microbes not from the plants nowadays okay so so usually what microbes can do microbes are simple miniature organisms that they, they secrete they produce amylase when they are subjected to an uh, environment where there is a lot of starchy material and no glucose that's very very important condition you need to satisfy this condition so so lot of starch in the media and no glucose or fructose in the media so if there is glucose or fructose in the media then uh, the micro probably don't need to uh, break down the starch because breaking down the starch is some extra work by the microbes and they will only do that if normal readily available sugars like glucose or fructose is unavailable so that's the condition we need to put the microbes in no glucose or fructose so we won't provide any readily available sugar to microbes and we put a lot of starch in the environment where the microbes are in so that the microbes produce certain enzymes 
ca which can break down the starch into the smaller fragments like glucose or fructose so that uh, they can take it and grow and divide that's a normal process and once they start producing those enzymes for breaking down starch we take up those enzymes and that's the job that's our job we are taking their their important tool of enzyme right so that's the process and for that what we need to do we need to simply grow those microbes in presence of starchy material without having any glucose or fructose that's the basic idea and that's what we always do in the productivity of amylase if you look at the productivity of alpha amylase which is most important kind of amylase in this case in the productivity of alpha amylase we usually use a substrate and the substrate for that case we usually use is kind of 5% starch use 5% starch material along with the starch we use uh, several type of salts like ammonium nitrate or sodium citrate the salts are required in very few amounts like 0.5% ammonium nitrate and 0.3% of sodium citrate and also some other salts like magnesium sulfate calcium chloride and many other things I'm not going to talk about them here along with that we also use in this case yeast extract because that's that's the food for the microbes right yeast extract then peptone so these are the common very very basic microbe microbial food we need to use this ext extract uh, peptone and everything then the salts and everything so that our bacteria can grow now the most important thing the bacteria that we usually use to produce alpha amylase uh, industrially is bacillus subtilis majorly the bacteria we use is bacillus subtilis it's very common type of microbes but we use it we can also use another microbe like bacillus polymixa we can use other type of uh, microorganism but bacillus subtilis is mostly used in this productivity okay so let me write polymixa can also be used but subtilis is the most uh, mostly used one okay now we grow bacillus subtilis in the mixture of 5% starch having yeast extracts peptones and uh, other salt conditions and optimum temperature and pH now the optimum temperature for the bacillus subtilis to grow here and to produce amylase remind you the optimum temperature for the bacillus subtilis to grow is like 40 to 45 degrees Celsius temperature but the optimum temperature for more production of amylase is kind of 27 to 30 degrees Celsius temperature this is optimum for the production of amylase that's why at the very beginning when we need to produce more and more amount of bacillus subtilis in a particular time we first grow our culture very fast at 40 to 45 degrees Celsius temperature for a shorter duration of time then once the culture uh, al is already built then we take our bacteria out and then we put it in the temperature 27 to 30 degrees Celsius so that more and more amylase start to produce okay that's the important thing for, for this aspect okay and then uh, we need to keep maintain the pH because pH is very very important the pH we take in this case it will be slightly acidic very very slightly like 6.8 it's very close to neutral but uh, pH is 6.8 maintained throughout the uh, process and it is generating the amylase for us that's very very simple right so if we talk about another amylase which is called the beta amylase we can uh, rely on plants for the beta amylase but we also rely on bacteria called bacillus polymixa for the productivity of beta amylase usually bac bacillus subtilis produces and give us alpha amylase okay now the polymixa can give us beta amylase and this beta amylase from polymixa is more uh, beauty uh, it's more important and it's it's much more stable than the plant derived beta amylase okay and usually the task of this beta amylase to produce the maltose syrup that's that's we have already talked about so that's a normal process and one question can be there that how this bacillus subtilis cells know to produce amylase once they're in a, a condition where there's a lot of starch out no uh, simple sugar like glucose or fructose in normal conditions miniature level of amylase they always produce and that start to come out from their cell outside because the amylase is an extracellular enzyme that means it is acting outside the cell 
right we must know the basics of amylase because the amylase is an extra cellular enzyme and it is an endo acting enzyme so what do you mean by these two terms extracellular and endo acting extracellular means so if if so let me talk about if this is the bacteria and uh, if it produces this amylase it will leave outside and then it will act outside so it will act here outside the cell okay and endo acting means if this is the starch so let me draw it if this is the starch this particular enzyme will act on somewhere middle of the starch not from the terminal it will cleave the starch from somewhere middle but not the terminal that's called the endo acting property that's the property of alpha amylase okay so that's why normally what what is going on the bacteria is producing a very minute level of uh, amylase throughout the time now once that is coming outside it is acting on to the starch that is present in the environment it is going to cleave starch into smaller disaccharides or dextrose or maltoses now that disaccharides when the maltose or dextrose start to form the when the maltose start to accumulate this maltose is going to give the signal to the bacteria yes there are starch outside you can secrete more amount of amylase now to take this starch up so in those condition the amylase secretion is elevated by the bacteria and that is the internal microbial signaling pathway which is not at all clear till now but it's something like that it first secrete always constituently secretes the amylase when they found that the production of secondary production of disaccharides start to elevate then it gets the signal that yes there are starch that's why the disaccharides start to elevate so start secreting more and more amylase to take up uh, to break down the starch into smaller uptakeable sugar like glucose or fructose and then they do that and they get the amylase outside once the amylase are produced we just purify our uh, our whole system we just take this bacteria out we just uh, extract the amylase out via different extraction processes like precipitation we rely on salting out because we are taking out the proteins because remember amylase is an enzyme so it's definitely a protein so we rely upon the techniques uh, normal techniques like uh, like uh, precipitation precipitation is very common one then salting out is used in this case for the product recovery then we can rely on sedimentation process sedimentation then we can also rely on dialysis dialysis so these are the different process to get our product so this is for the product recovery okay that's how we can recover our product then we can dry our product ground our product and it is ready for the use so that's about the amylase production and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.